Hey, J.P. Franco, a.k.a. Jetpack Paul. Listen, man, you don't need my That's encouragement it. to build up your YouTube page. You just got to do, do it, brother. Though. I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty confident that uh, you've got what it takes. Hmm. So listen, man, you got <laughs> you to ask for it and you got to do it. And I'm glad you like The Expanse. I love The Expanse. I wish that my character lasted longer on that show. Me too. Because uh, it just keeps getting better and better every season. And those guys are really, all of them That's are true. really cool. People. It's really good. Um, good luck, man. You can do it. You got this. Break a leg and then text me your YouTube channel so I can check it out. All right, later. Oh, man. Elias Jefexis is, like, the coolest. He's got just the best voice. Like, it's, it's, like, gravelly, but also smooth somehow at the same time. I feel very motivated right now. I, I kind of wish if if my beard ever like became sentient or something and it could speak and have its own voice, I hope and imagine that it would sound a lot like Elias Defexus' voice because it would just be this like unstoppable beard of manliness that has just like this really strong voice. <sighs> Man, that's cool. Okay, well, I mean, if Elias thinks I can do it and that I should do it, then I probably should. So, uh, man. All right. Well, okay. It's time to get started. I'm gonna, gonna make some more videos. So let's do this. Hi friends, welcome to 2019, New Year, same old jetpack. Before I forget, when I recorded that intro, I was so excited that I sort of forgot to do this, but thank you to Elias Jefexis for sending me that video through the site Cameo. You'll probably recognize Elias from a lot of things. I first took notice of him as Kenzo from The Expanse and then started to retroactively recognize him from everything else I had watched or played. He's the voice of Adam Jensen and Deus Ex. He's voiced multiple characters in different Assassin's Creed games and did a bunch of performance capture. He was Takar in Far Cry Primal and voices Major and Ragnarok in Fortnite. He's also been on one of my favorite shows that got canceled way too early, uh, Alphas, where he played Cornell Scipio and burned all of the things. He was also in Smallville a few times, which I only watched for the first time a few years ago. Basically, you've probably seen him or heard his voice, and frankly, he should be in all of the things. I think he would make a great Batman because his voice naturally has this noir detective quality to it. So anyway, go follow him on all of his social media pages. And if you're already a fan, you should go over to cameo.com slash EFEX and get a personal message from him. He's the coolest. So if you know me or watch my last video, you know that I love video games. Particularly, I love co-op games. Unfortunately, over the past decade, the pool of local co-op games has gotten smaller and smaller. The industry seems to be more focused on online multiplayer experiences or single player stories. I mean, don't get me wrong, I play League of Legends and loved Insomniac Spider-Man and the newest God of War, but for me, nothing can replace sitting side by side and playing a game with a friend. Uh, finding new co-op games has actually become a bit of a weekly hunt for me. I have done the work, so you don't have to, so here's my list of the eight must-have local co-op games. First on the list is Overcooked. I wanted to get this one out of the way since I mentioned it in my previous video. Overcooked is a frantic co-op cooking game. The game sounds easy. Orders come in, you move around a kitchen, chop ingredients, cook them, plate the dishes, then serve them and repeat for three minutes. The game turns up the heat pretty quickly when your kitchen is now on the deck of a pirate ship and your chopping station is sliding around on the deck or when your kitchen is split up in between three moving trucks rushing down the highway and you have to dash between each one or when your kitchen is dissected by an ice river and in order to serve your tomato soup you have to hop to floating ice platforms and you slip off of them like a dummy. 
It's a super fun game that you can play with up to four friends. It's great for video game veterans or complete newbies. The controls are very simple and you mainly just use two buttons, so pretty much anyone can play and pick this up. I've heard this game described as the friendship killer because it requires an extraordinary amount of teamwork. It's honestly more like a combat simulator than anything else. Here's a free tip. Communication is the key ingredient. Make sure you know what your friends are doing and make sure you announce what you're working on. Then you'll be able to spot when no one has washed dishes for a while or chopped enough ingredients and you can watch each other's back. It really boils down to good teamwork. My buddy and I three-starred every level of the first Overcooked and did it pretty quickly and I attribute that to our communication. If you've already beat this one, you can check out Overcooked 2, which came out last year and added some new recipes, mechanics, and online multiplayer. But honestly, I think local co-op is the best way to play. You can find both Overcooked games on Steam, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One. Magicka 2 is such a fantastic game. It's a co-op adventure action magic game where you play wizards that can craft all sorts of spells to save the world of Midgard from a magical threat. Now, disclaimer, the magic system in this game is a bit complex and may not be the easiest for a non-gamer. I had trouble keeping up for the longest time, but once you have it down, it flows pretty well. There are more difficult combinations that are like specific abilities that at first may be hard to remember, but soon you'll be casting spells so fast they'll call you Hurry Potter. The combinations are endless and the creativity is so much fun, like you can choose whether you want to shoot boulders at enemies or give yourself earth armor to shield you from melee attacks. It even gets more chaotic when you realize that there's friendly fire in this game. I can't tell you the amount of times I got struck by lightning because I was too close when my buddy cast it. But if you work together, you can combine your magic spells to form even stronger attacks. I know it sounds like a lot, but the creativity behind it makes it so much fun. There's a story, but it's honestly a little bit hard to remember because I was so focused on slinging spells, but the writing is really punny and there's a lot of secret items and areas, so I definitely recommend it. It's on sale on the PlayStation Store all the time, and I think it was actually a free PS Plus game, so you may already have it if you, if you have PS Plus, but um, anyway, you can find it on the PS4 and Steam. If you like space battles and teamwork, then you're bound to enjoy Lovers and a Dangerous Space Time. Play up to four players in your very own battleship, rescuing kidnapped space animals through a neon galaxy that wants to kill you. Your spaceship is separated into multiple rooms that each control some part of the ship. Navigation, shields, or various weapons. With two players, it was pretty crazy because you were constantly switching rooms, climbing ladders, jumping on guns, then running to the navigation room to steer your ship away before you crash into a planet. All the while, you're being chased or shot at from all around you. It's a really fun teamwork heavy game, kind of similar to Overcooked. It's helpful to communicate who's on what parts of the ship and what needs to be done. If you're having too much trouble on a level, just talk to your friend and plan it out. And then commit, commit to it, commit to it, commit. You can also customize your ship and add different types of guns, beams, and shields, and more. This game is out of this world. It's not a super long game, but it's definitely worth the $15 price tag. You can pick it up on Steam, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One. For fans of sports or racing games, you'll really get a kick out of Rocket League. Though it's actually been a while since I've played, I've logged a ton of hours on it. The concept is very simple. It's soccer, but you're in a car with a rocket booster on it. You can drive right into the ball and kick it, or use your rocket thrusters to flip your car forward or backward and do a bicycle kick. If you have enough boost saved up, you can propel yourself in the air for a short while to get an aerial hit in. It's a very straightforward, easy to pick up game with a lot of fun if you can play with a full team of people. There's both offline and online modes. Offline is great, except don't play with an AI on your team. Maybe it's a sign of an early up robot uprising, but they will betray you and score on your team or will block your shots and call it helping. You can pick up Rocket League on Steam, PS4, Switch, and Xbox One, and this is one of the few games you can actually play with friends across any platform. If you combined Legolas with Super Smash Bros. and a Super Nintendo, you'd get Towerfall. In the versus mode, fire volleys of arrows at your friends in a last man standing competition. The gameplay is fast and the controls are relatively simple. There are many different types of arrows to change up your strategy and gameplay. You can use bomb arrows to destroy terrain, or use drill arrows to hit opponents who think they are hiding safely behind walls. My favorite mechanic is the dodge. Sure, you can use it to avoid an arrow, but if you dodge into an arrow that's headed towards you, you'll avoid damage and add that arrow to your arsenal. Master that technique and you'll make your enemies quiver.
The graphics are clean and add to the nostalgia. The game also plays like Pac-Man, where if you go off the screen, you appear on the other side, so you can use that to your advantage to gank unexpecting archers. There's also a really fun co-op adventure mode where you destroy waves of enemies and big bosses. It gets pretty difficult, but if you play it, you get to know all the different arrows and power-ups, and it'll give you a leg up on the versus mode. None of the characters have advantages, but my favorite is the prancing puppet. Because just look at that guy. You can play Towerfall on all of your favorite systems, including the Ouya if you have one. This next one is hands down one of the coolest local co-op experiences available. A Way Out is an intense, story-driven action-adventure game. Unlike every other game on this list, you cannot play this single player. You have to play with another person. Play as either Leo or Vincent as you make a daring escape from prison. Stealth and fight your way out, and learn more about these guys as you uncover their backstories. Now, A Way Out isn't a perfect game. I played this with a friend shortly after it released and there were a few bugs, but I loved everything else about it. The game is 95% split screen the entire time. There was one sequence where we had to chase down this guy through different floors of a construction site and like I would be chasing him and then he would give me the slip but then my buddy could try to intercept him because he was on a higher floor and could actually jump down and try to tackle him. The game is fairly scripted, but there are key points where you have to choose whose lead you're going to follow. Vincent is calm and rational, while Leo is confident and aggressive, so different scenes will play out differently depending on whose plan you follow. The thing that separates this game from the rest is that the developers wanted to tell a story meant to be shared with someone else. It's not an easy thing to do, or everyone would do it, but I enjoyed being able to play a story-driven game with a friend and it not just be taking turns or passing the controller. A Way Out is only available on the PS4, but you can play either locally or online. And if you're playing with a friend online, only one of you needs a copy of the game to play together, which I think is a super cool feature. It's not a very long game, but it's definitely worth at least one playthrough. It jailhouse rocks. I, I couldn't think of anything better. So you just, you give me puns in the comments that would have been much better than, than that one. If you're a fan of puzzles and ever wondered what sentient yarn would be like, then boy, do I have a game for you. Unravel 2 is an adventure puzzle platformer where each player controls some anthropomorphic yarn as you try to make it to the end of the level. Sounds simple, but both characters are tied together. Solve puzzles by swinging, climbing, and tethering your way across some highly detailed lush environments such as forests, farms, and ammunition factory? There's a story going on in the background about these two kids, but it's a bit vague and I'm not 100% sure what's going on. And I'm no parent, but I don't think they're supposed to be in a bullet factory, but I don't mean to nitpick. Despite that, the levels are very detailed and each level feels unique. Puzzles build on each other and the game is short enough that it doesn't feel repetitive. It's a game that a gamer of any skill level can enjoy. A lot of cooperation is required, but if you hit a point in a level that things get too difficult, you can push a button to have the characters combine into one while one person takes control. You can play this game in either single player or co-op, but you can tell the game was definitely meant to be played with a friend. Regardless, any fans of puzzles or platformers will definitely enjoy it. Whoa. You can play on PS4, Xbox One, or on PC through the Origin Store. Rounding out the end of this list is indie roguelike Wizard of Legend. This was one of my favorite games of 2018. It's fast paced, fun, and probably the best Avatar The Last Airbender game we'll ever get. It's slitherined under the radar. This game lends itself to veteran gamers and players who don't mind dying a lot. Fight your way through six levels, three bosses, and one final boss to make it to the end of the dungeon and collect one rare magic spell that you can use on future runs. This was my first roguelike and I was really bad starting out. I learned that you just gotta persevere, keep going after those first 20 or 30 or so deaths, and just keep pushing. Eventually, you unlock stronger spells and you learn the enemy's fight patterns. This game can be played both single player and co-op, and I would say that though single player is probably easier, I had more fun beating the game with a friend. The last boss is very difficult, especially the first couple of times. When me and my friend won for the very first time, it really felt like we accomplished something. The friendship was the rare magic the whole time. Oh, and this. If you're like Luna and love good things, then pick Wizard of Legend up on PS4, Switch, Steam, and Xbox One. That's my list, and I had to really narrow it down. I've got another list of about seven or eight that almost made the cut, but I cut them out for time. I may throw them in another video if they're 
people who want to see it. I don't know if you guys are as interested in co-op games as I am. Also, I want to let you guys know that I created a Patreon last month with plans to release exclusive content on that platform as I steadily increase the amount of videos I release on YouTube this year. Patreon is a platform where you can support creators with monthly donations, get exclusive content, and make an impact on me and my channel. I already have my first subscriber, so thank you to Michael Fox McLeod for being my first Patreon patron. And in order to thank you, I found the stock 3D baby humanoid robot thing to dance in celebration. That's what you get. I think I'm going to continue to find the most ridiculous stock videos and use them as I list my monthly Patreon patrons. So if you get a chance, please go to patreon.com slash jetpackpaul and just see what I'm offering. And if you're willing to support me, that would be a tremendous help and would allow me to continue making great content for you guys. So now that you've heard my favorite co-op games, what are yours? I tried to leave some of the more obvious ones off this list, so I know there are some great ones that I, I missed. As for 2019, not a lot has been announced. I'm definitely looking forward to Yoshi's Crafted World and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, which are both Switch exclusives. Um, they also announced a Luigi's Mansion sequel, and I know they just added co-op to the 3DS version, and so I'm kind of hoping that there will be co-op on this new game. Um, but really, Nintendo has kind of been the main champion of local co-op. And I'm also looking forward to Children of Morta, which is a game on Kickstarter that I backed a long time ago, and I think it's gonna be released this year. But what about you? Do you have any co-op games you're looking forward to? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you later, friends.